You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Arya Whitner, and this is your next audio update for Wednesday, August 9th, 2017. We are just 10 days away from NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3, which is, of course, the day before SummerSlam. And we rounded up the full card here tonight um, with two more matches added. Basically, they added the two openers. Um, but let's get into that, shall we? The show began with Nikki Cross in the ring, screaming and screeching for the Authors of Pain to come out. Um, Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf came in through the crowd to join her in the ring as Akim and Razor stormed down the aisle. Akim was a little bit ahead of his partner, and as he got in the ring, Razor was attacked on the ramp by the returning Eric Young. Young zip-tied Razor to the guardrail, and all three male members of Sanity laid out Akim in the ring. Finally, Razor literally dragged the guardrail into the ring, but he was no match for Wolf, Dane, and Young doing the three-on-one at this point. Uh, Wolf and Young gave Akam a double-team neckbreaker, and for one of the first times ever, someone stood tall over the Authors of Pain as Sanity posed with the NXT Tag Team titles uh, before walking away. You know what we haven't had in a few months here on NXT? A good old-fashioned contract signing. But never fear, everyone, that will be rectified next week in this very ring as Asuka and Ember Moon put their John Hancocks on the dotted line to make their NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 match official. I always want to ask what happens if, say, Asuka decides to not sign the contract. You know, she doesn't really want to wrestle Ember Moon anyway. She feels that Ember Moon's not ready for her. So what if she just doesn't do it? Earlier today, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce were planning on giving us an iconic makeup tutorial. And as you'll note, every time Billy and Peyton try to do uh, one of these earlier today videos, things never go right. And this time, uh, Ruby Wright randomly walked through their shot which pissed them off so much that they were too upset to do their makeup tutorial. We finally got the debut of the Street Profits as they took on the Metro Brothers, Chris and JC. Uh, The Street Profits are Angelo Dawkins, who you might recall spending most of the last five years as an off-and-on TV jobber, with his wacky two headbands that, for some reason, he wears. Um, Teaming with Montez Ford, um, the Metros were trained by the Dudleys and dressed like greasers, which was weird because they weren't actually acting like greasers. They were just dressing the part. you got to live the gimmick, guys. It's, you know, it's not just enough to dress like it. You have to actually, you know... Put forth the effort to act like you're a greaser. Uh, Dawkins lost one of his headbands as him and Ford did a series of moves to Chris Metro, but the dastardly jobbers got the brief advantage with a punch to the stomach. Well, whatever works, right? Um, But it didn't last long as Dawkins ran over Chris with a spear, and the Prophets did a shout-out to D'Lo Brown, as Dawkins gave J.C. Metro a sky high, followed by Ford hitting a frog splash for the win. Last week, Alistair Black was leaving the arena when he was attacked by Hideo Itami. Um, Thankfully, random people in uh, security suits were standing there, and they were able to drag Itami kicking and screaming away as Alistair Black just stared at him. And that led to the announcement that Alistair Black and Hideo Itami will wrestle at NXT TakeOver 3. Or NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. Uh, we go to commercial, come back from commercial, and the dapper NXT general manager, Mr. William Regal, is mid-ring 
to introduce the combatants in the main event of TakeOver. Um, I didn't have my stopwatch out this time. However, Bobby Roode only took about two minutes to get to the ring with his own personal security. Uh, the security he mentioned is there to stop a raving lunatic like Roderick Strong from running out and attacking him and ruining the money match at TakeOver. Rude brought up McIntyre's promo from last week where McIntyre said Rude was entitled. Rude actually agreed with him, uh, saying that unlike McIntyre, he doesn't need a second chance. He came into NXT a year ago and has done everything he said he was going to do, from changing NXT to becoming the face of the brand to becoming the champion. Whether Drew likes it or not, this is Rude's NXT Stating that this is not we, this is me. Drew said Rude is a prototype and he has had an amazing year. But there is one big problem and that is that Rude is an ass. Drew is starting to take pity on Rude because Rude believes the crap coming out of his own mouth. Drew vowed to claim more Rude back down to reality. And in Brooklyn, he'll be staring across the ring at the new... NXT champion. Roderick Strong stormed out onto stage uh, to announce that he is not done with Rude. Um, Strong said that this is not about the NXT title, but it's about Rude disrespecting Roddy's fiance, Roddy's family, and Roddy as a man. And Strong said he wanted to fight Rude and asks if Rude is a man to accept the challenge. Mr. Regal basically lost control at this point as he tried multiple times to stop Strong excuse me, from mouthing off. Rude snapped and screamed that he'll give Strong everything he wants. He'll give him a match with Rude. He'll give him a title shot if Strong beats McIntyre next week. Again, Mr. Regal tried to ixnay this, but McIntyre said he wanted the match. Uh, the fans chanted for the match. Rude encouraged the match. And finally, Mr. Eagle succumbed to peer pressure and booked the match for next week. And so, in case there's confusion, next week, Drew McIntyre will wrestle Roderick Strong. If Roderick Strong wins, then in the weeks after TakeOver, he will get a match with Bobby Rude. Theoretically, if Rude is still champion... It'll be a title match. However, win, lose, or draw, Drew McIntyre will still challenge Bobby Roode for the title at TakeOver. Caleb Braxton interviewed Johnny Gargano. Gargano said he's a little nervous. He already was a little nervous about wrestling last week, but he thought back to the Brooklyn crowd last year and how the reaction DIY got from that crowd helped lead to all their successes. Gargano announced that he wants a match at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Up next, because I guess that face-to-face didn't last long enough, um, we got Danny Burch versus Oni Lorcan, the rematch from their hard-hitting affair from a few weeks ago. Um, You know what they say, you never fight an ugly person because they have nothing to lose, but I'm not sure what the cliche is when they're both ugly. Uh, They began with some very intense grappling. Um, The wrestling portion of our evening ended as Birch tripped Lorcan on a leapfrog, which I guess is the equivalent of fighting words to them. They exchanged some hard European uppercuts, and Lorcan drove Birch into the turnbuckles harder than you've ever seen anyone take that move. Birch eventually got tired of being hit, so he booted Oni in the mush and hit a missile dropkick. Birch hit his hooking lariat, which is allegedly his finish. Um, I don't know if he's ever won a match up to this point on TV, but he has a finish. Lorcan not only kicked out of that, but he also kicked out of a Tower of London. Uh, So Birch hit a knee to the face and several hard chops, while Lorcan tripped him and went for a half crab. Birch wasn't turning, so Lorcan booted him and booted him, and finally Birch got tired of being kicked, so Birch up-kicked Lorcan in the face, Finally, Lorcan got tired of being kicked, so he grabbed the other leg and put on the full Boston Crab, but Birch rolled through and picked up the shocking win. 
If this is not Birch's first TV win, he's definitely won less than five matches. Uh, Birch went for the handshake, but Lorcan slapped it away and began walking away. Oni stopped himself, returned to center ring, and shook Birch's hand like a man. Birch then held the ropes open for Lorcan as he left. And I was getting ready to sign off because it was now 8.49. The show should be finished. However, apparently that was not the main event. We went to commercial and came back from commercial with the real main event of Andrade Cien Almas versus No Way Jose. Apparently it's a real thing. Um, So it's the second week in a row where we get a main event that wasn't announced ahead of time. Jose managed to take longer than Bobby Roode to get to the ring as he went into the crowd to Fiesta before the match. Why is it okay for Jose to party immediately before his match, but it's not okay for Almas to party after his match? Um, So I've been saying Fiat Trinidad's new name wrong. It's not Selena Vega like Selena Gomez. It's Zelina Vega with a Z for some reason. Um, This name is so stupid. I just want to point out that Fia Trinidad on her Twitter doesn't even mention that that's her name. And she obviously mentioned she's in NXT. She obviously mentions, you know, and retweets a bunch of stuff regarding the show. But at no point does she actually mention what her name on the show is. And if that's not an indictment of it, I don't know what is. Um, anyway, she's there to force Almas to take the match seriously. When he did that thing where he just lays in the ropes, Jose kicked him off. And then she yelled at Almas uh, for doing that. And I guess, you know, that works. Because the match didn't last much longer. Almas hit the running double knees in the corner and picked up the quick win with the hammerlock DDT. Vega was nice enough, though, to allow Almas to preen to the camera after winning. Um, And as they walked up the ramp, Vega stormed to the announce desk, all four and a half feet of her. She stormed to the announce desk, barely taller than the announcers who were sitting down, grabbed the mic, and announced that Almas now deserves the spotlight for winning this match and is going to accept Johnny Gargano's open challenge for TakeOver. And so Gargano will wrestle Andrade Cien Almas at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Part 3. So that's going to do it for this week. Believe it or not, next week it's already the uh, the go-home show for TakeOver. Until then, I want to thank you all for listening and uh, have a great seven days. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.